everyone. I believe I am live. This is my first virtual conference. This is really, really exciting for me. Um, so, oh, excellent. I'm getting thumbs up and hearts. Oh, I'm honored, guys. I'm at the Academy Awards. This is great. Um, awesome. So thank you, everyone, for joining us in this session. My name is Zach, and I'm a project manager. I do the marketing for Qualcomm Academy. We're essentially the training arm of Qualcomm, and I'll talk about our different training toward the end of this session. But a good bulk of this session is going to focus on jobs and internships at Qualcomm and working at Qualcomm and, what's that, and, and, and what that is like. And for that, I have my colleague Cody from our university recruiting team. And Cody is going to start us off by talking a little bit about what it's like to work at Qualcomm. So I will turn it over to Cody. Thank you. Um, thank you, thank you. So let me get that pulled up for y'all. It's great to meet everyone. Um, like Zach mentioned, my name's Cody. Um, I work also at Qualcomm. I work on our campus recruiting team. And so you may or may not have seen me at a campus near you, um, but my team obviously focuses on the recruitment of students just like yourself to kind of come and join us for different opportunities. But before I get to talking about some of that, you may or may not be wondering who Qualcomm is. So I'm going to spend just a few minutes talking to you a little bit about what Qualcomm does, kind of a little bit of our history, and then I'll transition into what I'm sure is a lot of the goods that you're looking to hear about. All right, perfect. So talking a little bit about Qualcomm itself. So Qualcomm's history, you know, we really kind of define ourselves and really focus on creating a world where everyone and everything can be connected. And so the funny thing is Qualcomm isn't necessarily a household name. Uh, some of you may be familiar with who we are, but a lot of times and oftentimes more so the case is that you're not. Um, I know at least for myself, the only reason I knew who Qualcomm was is because when I was growing up in San Diego, Qualcomm was headquartered there. They kind of had their name throughout the city. The uh, San Diego State's uh, football campus stadium is named after the company. And then the ch old Charger Stadium was also. And so I kind of knew who they were. But a lot of times we're not the company that's in your face. We're more behind the scenes. Um, and really what we're doing is we're, we're creating this movement and we're rapidly moving towards a place where we can connect everyone. I think one of the big things, of course, that comes to mind when folks think about Qualcomm is 5G, and I'll talk a little bit about that. But before we do, we'll give you kind of a fun history of who Qualcomm is and kind of where we started. So on this slide, you're probably thinking like, who, who are all these folks? So this is, this is actually the founders of Qualcomm. So really the history is at the core of a, a success story. So it actually was founded in 1985 um, by Dr. Irwin Jacobs and six other colleagues. So this was actually at Dr. Jacobs' home. So truly classic like garage story it started in the house um but they actually the fun thing is they didn't have a business plan they didn't know what they were going to create but the thing that they all had in common were that they were all experts in digital communications and of course at that time in the 1980s this was a huge growing field as analog technology was still like the core focus which probably sounds crazy at this point um but they knew that they could do something incredible and they were all visionaries and so what they wanted to focus on was providing quality communications. And so if you look at that bottom part, qual and then com, that's essentially how they got to the name of the company. And so that's where it was derived and that's kind of where it all started. But they really had this vision for a company and a place where we could continue to invent a strong culture of innovation, relentless pursuit of excellence. And that still lives at Qualcomm today. I think. If you were to ask any of our employees kind of what what is Qualcomm's culture? What is it like to work there? You're going to find that this is definitely at the heart of what we do as we continue to look for ways to innovate and solve some of our industry's biggest challenges. And then as we go to the next slide, so I talked a little bit about 5G. Of course, you all are very well aware of 5G, know what 5G is. But the reason I bring this up is because Qualcomm, when we first started, really where we became known in the industry was with chips in cell phones. And the funny thing is, like I mentioned before, you know, Qualcomm kind of playing this role of like a behind the scenes. You don't see it in front of your face because it, it powers everything that we're doing. So whether it's in your cell phone, whether it's in a headset, um, whether it's in your car, you don't think about it because the, the name is not right in front of you, but 
Qualcomm is empowering and powering a lot of what we do and a lot of the ways we that we stay connected today. Of course, back in the day, the communication really, you know, got started. Of course, the cell phone became a thing, but now our cell phones can go with us everywhere and in different forms. And that's what Qualcomm is continuing to do. So we built on 3G, 4G. We were kind of some of the pioneering of the commercialization of 5G. And then as you can probably imagine, starting to work on six and seven. So we are continuing to push that technology shift in mobile, but just across the board as well. So some of the big spaces that we work in, you know, as we kind of think of Qualcomm's areas of focus, I will say if any of you have visited our job site, you're probably fascinated and or confused because Qualcomm just hires so many people for so many di different types of roles. But really, when you kind of think about the, the bread and butter, so to speak, of what Qualcomm does, what we focus on, a lot of it really is within mobile, within automotive, IoT networking. I think one thing that's not on here that is probably top of mind for a lot of you, especially if you do follow Qualcomm on the news, of course, is AI. You know, I think as we, we continue to press forward and we move forward with the technologies that we're building and that we're offering, AI is, of course, a huge one and one that Qualcomm is definitely pushing full speed ahead on as well. Okay, so now shifting out of, you know, Qualcomm's background and kind of what we do and, and talking a little bit more about some of the things more, I guess, internally. So our corporate social responsibility, I'm not going to spend a ton of time here, but I know that for some folks, they're really interested in kind of like, how does Qualcomm focus on their responsibility back to the communities that we serve? And so I'm not going to read through this, but I will focus just quickly on the three that are bolded. So one of our goals is to reach a net zero global operational emissions by 2040. I know that that's one thing that a lot of us see just across companies across the board is how are we focused on doing that? How are we getting there? So that is one of Qualcomm's goals. The second one that you can see as you get towards the bottom is increasing our representation of women and underrepresented minority leadership by 15% and then increasing just our overall URM representation by 20% by 2025. And so, um, especially as you could probably imagine myself being in recruiting, we tend to, of course, to be on the forefront of how we're pushing that forward. Although of course it is a full company um, effort in order to get there. And then the last one is just inspiring the next generation of inventors um, with through strategic STEM initiatives. So this is a great example. I know that the, IEEE community is, is a wonderful one made up of diverse top talent, um, folks that are creating and becoming the inventors of the next generation. And so we love doing things, partnering through things like this, where we can continue to inspire that next generation. All right. So now I'm going to talk a little bit more about, I guess, what I'll call like my world, you know, the world of campus recruitment. Um, so for, I'm going to specifically focus just for today's conversation on our team um, so Qualcomm's campus recruiting, um, really does span a lot of different areas. You know, it, it, I will say that for Qualcomm specifically, we do hire a ton and a lot of it. And most of it I'll say is in engineering. And so Qualcomm is an engineering first company. I would say 95% of the roles that we're hiring are within engineering. And that's a huge number. Uh, compared to maybe some of the other companies that I've worked for in the past. But giving you kind of an overview of our campus recruitment program. So within Qualcomm, we do offer, of course, our summer internship program that's probably going to be very similar to either internship programs maybe that you've experienced at other companies um, or maybe that you have an idea in your head about, oh, this is what I think a, an intern program would be like. That's likely going to be very similar to what Qualcomm hosts over the summer. Um, and then we do have year round internships and co-ops as well in our Canada or in Canada, I'm sorry. And then the other thing too, that uh, you might've seen us, we are a huge supporter um, of conferences across the board. And so we do attend a lot of those, including like Grace Hopper ship and other uh, programs like that. And then of course, being on campus. Now, I wish we could go to every campus, um, but I hope for some of you on the call that maybe you have seen Qualcomm on your campus before whether it was at an info session, career fair, or maybe we were coming to speak to you in a more um, in a more intimate environment with maybe your student organization like IEEE on campus. Um, but some of you might be wondering like what we hire for, and I'll talk about that in just a couple of slides. 
but two numbers you're probably seeing on here that might be piquing your interest. So this summer, we are excited to welcome almost 500 interns to join us. And so we have a very large internship program. We love the internship program. I will say we it's not a cheesy thing to say it, but we really do get energized when we have our interns joining us, which would be a, wonderful if we could do that year round. But the, the Qualcomm campus is extremely vibrant, especially over the summer, um, again, because of interns that are joining us. And then through the year, once you convert, you become a new grad, you're joining us full time, you get to be part of that culture, bringing that excitement and that experience, um, which is extremely, extremely exciting and wonderful for us to have. And then talking a little bit more about the intern program. So I don't know exactly, um, you know, if, if everyone here is going into an internship or maybe you're in your senior year or master's program and looking for full time, but I'll quickly tell you a little bit about our internship program. I think, you know, I've been in campus recruitment for over 10 years. And so the intern programming is very near and dear to my heart. Um, but a little bit about Qualcomm's program specifically. So dependent on what kind of school you're at. So if you're at a semester student, um, when we look at start dates, especially maybe if this is your first one, you're like, oh, when might I start? So for Qualcomm's, we typically start our internship program specifically for semester students in the last half of May. So you can expect that sometime in the second half of that month is when you would start. If you're a quarter student, we typically tend to offer those start dates throughout the month of June. And then for end dates, you can almost calculate just three months later as our internships do tend to be right around 12 weeks. Now, relocation and housing tends to be a big question for us as we kind of answer questions from students about, you know, what does that, the housing look like? Um, you may have seen uh, that San Diego was rated the, the most expensive for cost of living for this past year based on income and cost of living. So especially being headquartered there, you might be wondering what that looks like. Well, the good news is that Qualcomm does offer uh, support with the travel to the Qualcomm campus for the summer and fully furnished housing while you're interning with us. And so we are excited to be welcoming our interns this coming summer and kind of have that set up for them as well, which is a great benefit. We do offer very competitive uh, wages for our internships based on degree majors and grad date. Um, I will say one thing that is very big for Qualcomm is pay equity. We are very, very stringent on ensuring that everyone at the same level is getting paid the same. And so we will, we do put this out there that we do not negotiate on the pay rates. And we do that to ensure pay equity for all of our employees. Um, you get paid time off, paid holidays, um, and there is quali um, you do qualify for overtime as well. But of course, a lot of the stuff that you're wondering is like, well, what's what, what, what am I going to work on over the summer? What does that look like? Um, so in addition to the actual role that you play, so again, not sure what this, the scope of, a, of what you're trying to work on, but whether you're joining our wireless communications team, uh, you're coming in as a mechanical engineer, um, or coming in to work on AI, the extent into which you get to work on, the projects are just incredible. Um, one, of the th one of the things that I love to share with folks that they get very interested in is the type of work. So although the type of work that you're going to work on will vary project to project, one thing that I can say is that regardless of what team you're working on, you can, you can rest assured that you are working on something that is actually part of what Qualcomm is building. Uh, there's a story that I love that I actually, so last summer we had an intern that I ran into and I was just asking how the summer was going. And they were actually telling me that their boss told them you were actually hired um, to kind of, uh, or we hired you because we had come up with a problem that our team couldn't solve. And so they actually brought on a couple of interns and the interns were actually focused on solving this engineering issue that the full-time team couldn't figure out. And uh, long behold, the team of two interns not only were able to solve for the problem, but they created a solution that the full-time engineering teams actually adopted and was put into use. And so you can just imagine probably the excitement that you would get when you're coming for the summer. You're like, oh, I wonder what I'm going to work on. And you actually get to solve something that the teams couldn't solve themselves. And so there's just so many wonderful things that you might be able to work on and look forward to. One event before I move forward that I will highlight that tends to be the intern's favorite part of the summer is our showcase. 
And essentially, what you can kind of think of that as like a career fair in, in reverse, or maybe if you've participated or attended like a research symposium. So essentially, as interns, you'll get an opportunity towards the latter part of your internship to actually attend a intern showcase where you are at the tables presenting your projects and kind of like what you've been working on, what the, what progress you've made. And it's not just anyone, your managers might stop by, I might stop by, Zach could stop by, and then Cristiano, our CEO, will stop by. So the great thing is we have everyone all the way up to our CEO who attends the showcase. And it's just such a wonderful opportunity for you to be able to kind of show what you've been able to work on. All right. So as you're kind of thinking through, you know, Qualcomm, what are we hiring for? What does that look like? Again, as I said earlier, um, we hire across the board. Um, and so you can kind of see here, I know this is kind of an eyesore because it's it, there's a lot of information and I know it's not as, as clean, but this hopefully gives you a good idea of kind of what, what skill sets we're looking for. Now, um, although our internship postings aren't currently up, um, typically in the job descriptions, you'll actually find a lot of information. So I'm going to use the software group as an example. So when you're looking at software embedded firmware, machine learning, AI, automotive, and application and tool development. Now, when we post our internships specifically, we do post them and you'll actually see in there, we'll post it like this. And then we, we create, or we provide an additional list of skill sets that hopefully offer you some guidance as you're kind of thinking through, okay, so what are you requiring for this type of role? Again, we're bringing in almost 500 interns with us this summer. So you can imagine we're hiring for a lot of different skill sets. And so hopefully this kind of gives you a good idea as to like, okay, what are the, some of the things that we can be working on? But again, going back to Qualcomm connecting the world, this shows you what it takes and the skill sets that it takes in order to do that. Um, now, as it relates to full-time, as I realize some of you might be on here and you're like, hey, I actually am going to be graduating and I'm looking for full-time roles. For full-time, it's the same thing in the sense that we do hire across all of these technology and skill sets. Um, but the one thing to keep in mind is unlike internships, for our full-time positions, those are posted on an ongoing basis. So if you're graduating this May or June, um, or maybe you're graduating in December of this coming year, definitely keep an eye on that careers page and start to look at the roles that are posted. Um, you may be wondering like, hey, how do I know if I'm eligible for this position? I'm just gonna give you an insider tip. Qualcomm's positions do not typically say, you know, new grad. Uh, we do not post our roles like that. Um, so when you're looking at those positions, you'll just want to be mindful um, that you'll typically be eligible for any of them that just say like systems engineer, software engineer. Once you start to see that, that staff um, director, that's how you're going to know that it's probably getting into a much higher level. So that's just an insider tip as... Um, I'll, I'll be the one to admit it's not as clear. Um, so when you're looking at that, just take a look at anything that says technology type and engineer, and you'll likely be eligible for that role. All right. Okay, so the last thing that I wanted to talk about before I hand it back over to Zach is some tips. Um, these, are, these are likely tips that some of you already know, already are putting into practice. Um, but really, I, I really like to share these because I think oftentimes when you're going through an application process, especially these days, I know, trust me, I know that that process can feel like a black hole. Sometimes you apply and you're wondering, like, did that even work? Or, you know, I haven't seemed to be able to get anything. Like, can someone give me some advice? And so these are just a few tips that I like to share. Um, and again, I know some of it's obvious, but hopefully you can at least take one thing away from this. Uh, the first one is, of course, to tailor your resume to the job. This may seem obvious, but it's actually not put into practice as often as you'd think. Um, you'd be surprised how many times we see resumes that still have things like objective lines that are tailored to a different company. And so just be cautious and just make sure that you're taking your time when you're applying, that you submit a resume that you've tailored to the job. So if you're applying for a systems engineering role with Qualcomm, read the job description and really look especially at the skill set section and if that stuff is not on your resume and you have it make sure it's on your resume um one trend that i've been seeing with resumes that i am loving is folks have started to bold skill sets and keywords within their resume 
So in addition to having a skill set section, they've actually started to bold it in their resume, which as, as a recruiting professional, I love it. Again, I started to see that really become popular this year. And I think it's genius. Um, the second one is be prepared to speak to your resume because I tell all of my candidates, your resume is fair game. So if you have something on your resume and you're like, I'm going to put that on there, although I don't really know a whole lot about it, but I kind of, I just want to let you know, it's fair game for an interviewer to ask you about it. So just make sure that anything you're putting on your resume, you're prepared to speak to. Another one is network, network, network. Make sure you're going to things like this, the, you know, this conference that you're attending, you know, when you're at your career fair, one of the things that I love to see is go to career fairs, even if you're not looking. Um, so one of the things that I've seen is I'll talk to students, they'll stand in line and they already have a job lined up, whether it's an internship or a full time, but they specifically will come up. They're like, Hey, I want to give an introduction. And I want to start by saying, I actually have a job lined up, but I am fascinated that your company does this, this, and this. You'd be surprised what that connection will do for you. Because although you have a job lined up, we all know, we don't know what happens next. We have no idea what that looks like. And so I would just, I would tell you no matter what it is, whether it's a job fair, your student organizations, which if you're not involved, get involved, no matter what it is, network, 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 and do not burn bridges. I am telling you. Um, the other one is think out loud during your interviews. And what I mean by that is a lot of oftentimes in interviews, you'll find that you'll get stuck on problems and that is completely normal. So if that does happen to you, if it's happened to you, do not feel bad. That is absolutely normal. It's happened to me several times and I know it happens. But what I mean by think out loud is when you're working through your problem, number one, repeat the question back just to make sure that you understood what they were asking. But then the second part of that is as you're working through the problem, whether you're coding, um, you know, you're doing some virtual whiteboarding, tell your interviewer what you're thinking. Like, okay, okay, this is what I'm trying to do. I think I'm going to approach it this way. I'm going to do it because of this. And this is why I recommend you do that. If you get stuck, which very well might happen at some point in your interviewing, you know, journey, the interviewer, number one, is going to be a lot more likely to be able to jump in and help you, which... I know it sounds crazy, but they do want to help you. So when you're stuck, they're not always actually looking for the right answer. They're actually more keen on understanding how you think, and, you, and they're actually assessing your problem-solving ability, not your ability to get it right. So if you're thinking out loud and you're working through that, you're actually demonstrating a skill set they're looking for without them having to ask it. And then the, the last two, learn to love feedback, especially feedback that quote unquote seems negative, but really it's just an area of opportunity. I will tell you that is one thing I struggled with earlier on in my career, because I think for the most part, not, not we're not necessarily programmed to love to hear things that we're not great at. But one thing that I've really come to love is when I go through my performance reviews, I actually tell my manager, hey, I'm hoping there's good information or some good feedback in there, but I actually like you to start with the areas of opportunity. And that's what I want to focus on because we won't grow and we can't grow unless we know what those are. And so when you're in your internship, when you're starting a new grad position, or even when you're interviewing, ask them, you know, what feedback can you give me? Like, was there anything that I could have done better? Um, because you will learn to love that and it will make you a much stronger leader as you grow. Last thing, focus on your unique skill set. So I know all of you, as you're going through your academic career, I know that this early on, Sometimes it's a little more difficult to kind of say, hey, I'm going to do, I know exactly what I want to do. Some of you, that might be the case. And if that's incredible, but a lot for a lot of us, we're still exploring. But what I mean by focus on your unique skill set is, let's just say you're majoring in, um, uh, you know, electrical engineering, and you specifically want to focus on like FPGAs or, you know, ASIC engineering or something like that. Really, really hone in and make sure that you're tailoring your search to that. And don't go in and apply for every role under the sun. Now, I know it's easy and tempting to do that, especially when you're like, no, but I really, really want a job for this summer, or I really want a full-time role. But if you're a hardware engineer, but you're still just submitting software, just in case you're submitting, like that doesn't benefit you. Um, and truthfully, it could be 
um, misleading or it might not be the best look when they're going through because then we're a recruiter might be wondering like, oh, like what is it that you actually want to work on? So again, apply for what's relevant. And if that is six roles, perfect. Submit those applications. But if not, just be keen and make sure that you're focusing on your unique skill set that makes you the engineer that you are. Okay. I just realized I've been talking for a minute. I'm so sorry. So I'm going to bring Zach back up. Um, as we transi transition into this last part of the presentation. So let me get to that next slide for you. Awesome. Cody, thank you so much. That was wonderful. And we're going to have plenty of time for Q&A about jobs and internships at Qualcomm and working at Qualcomm and everything Cody talked about in about five minutes or so. But before we get into that, I want to talk to you guys a little bit about the Qualcomm Academy and about some of the different upskilling and basically professional development opportunities that we offer to students that, that are free and that could help uh, give you a leg up in the interview process and, and help give you some extra knowledge and skills that will help you in your career. So before I start, show of thumbs up or hearts or really any reaction that pleases you, um, who is a leader in their IEEE or HKN chapter? We've got a couple thumbs up coming in. I got a wow. I love the wow. That's great. Um, excellent. Well, so the reason I ask is because these opportunities, we are really looking to spread these opportunities through IEEE, through HKN on university campuses around the world. These are open to any university throughout the world. Uh, they are only in English, so people just have to know English. Other than that, there are no prerequisites to these, to these courses. So a little bit about Qualcomm Academy before I go into the two opportunities we have for students. So as I mentioned at the beginning of this talk, we are essentially the educational and training arm of Qualcomm. So we offer 5G, AI, and, and other relevant tech training to university students, companies, job seekers, et cetera, all over the world. We market our training as premium training because all of it is developed and delivered by expert engineers here at Qualcomm. So this is really a chance for you to learn from the best of the best. And we have flexible training because all of it is conducted via e-learning. So it's all online and self-paced. Once you sign up, you have one year to complete the program. You can do it wherever you would like, whenever you would like, as long as you have an internet connection. We also offer a broad technical scope of courses through the Qualcomm Academy for the purposes of this of this conversation, we'll focus on our introductory level 5G program, our 5G university program, as well as our AI training, which focuses on Qualcomm AI platforms and tech and technologies. Uh, next slide, please. So a little bit about our 5G university program. So this is really our flagship university program for students who want to learn about 5G. The reason it is, well, many reasons it is it is very, very popular, number one of which um, is that it is completely free for you. So this program has three components. The free 5G training is the first component. As I mentioned, the training is completely free. So our, the, the two courses involved in the training are our 5G primer and our fundamentals course on the left side of your screen. And the, it's about eight to 10 hours worth of online and self-paced e-learning content talking about what is 5G, what are the technologies involved, use cases, and so on. The courses normally cost almost $500 per person, but we offer them to university students free of charge. And if you're interested in and en en enrolling in this program, on the resources tab, which should be on the right side of your screen, you can check out the link for the 5G university program, as well as the AI training, which I'll talk about in just a second. And, that, and that, that'll take you directly to the application page. Now, once you finish the training, the second component is the certification component. So this component is optional. If you, if you would like, you can sign up for the 5G introductory level certification exam. And if you pass, we will send you a Qualcomm 5G certificate, which of course is great for your LinkedIn profile, CV, resume, et cetera. Now, while the training is free, the exam does cost $29, but again, it is optional. If you just wanna do the free training, that's totally fine. I recommend doing that and putting that on your resume. If, however, you would like that official Qualcomm certificate, uh, you will have to sign up, pass the exam, and then we send you the certificate. Now, the third aspect of the program is also quite, quite, 
quite popular. And this is our recruitment potential. So what I mean by that is that for students who pass the 5G introductory level certification exam, I let Cody know. And then your candidate profile, when you apply for a job or internship at Qualcomm, will automatically be tagged as having passed the exam. So of course, it is no guarantee, but it could help give you a leg up in the interview process. So that's the university program in a nutshell. Again, the free training, the certification, and the potential for Qualcomm recruitment. So if you have any questions about this program, definitely type them into the chat and, and, and we will get to them at, at the end. Also, if you are a student leader on your campus and you are, and you are let's say, on the leadership team of your IEEE and or HKN chapter, please reach out to me, visit my, my booth. We can set up a time to meet one-on-one -on -one in the next couple of weeks and I can talk about a, a very streamlined way to get this program to all of, of, of your members or students on your campuses. And I would be more than happy to do that. So definitely check out the check out my booth and I can talk to you a lot more about that. Uh, next slide, please. So the second offer we have, I shouldn't call it offer, second op opportunity we have is our free AI training. This opportunity is actually free for anyone on our website. The 5G university program is unique just to students, but this is for anyone, but we market it specifically to university students because we know students are very interested, of course, in AI. And we have four free Qualcomm AI courses that talk about the fundamentals of Qualcomm AI, Qualcomm Compute, Robotics, and much more. And these courses, again, as I mentioned, are free. They are all online and self-paced through e-learning. And each course is around two to five hours in length, depending on the course. So if you're interested in AI and you're looking for a cool professional development opportunity and learning about new Qualcomm AI technologies and platforms, I highly recommend signing up for these courses. All of the, all of the information for, for these courses are on the link in the resources section. Can I get a quick thumbs up? If Are you able to see the resources section on the right side of the page? Excellent. Lots of thumbs up. So I assume that's a yes. Perfect. Perfect. So with that, I want to open it up to general Q&A. So I'll take a look. I think we have a few more minutes here. Um, I'll take a look. Uh, any? Do we have any questions? Cody, were you looking at the chat? Any, any questions you want to address here? Yeah, I did see a couple of questions. So the first one, um, and I'm scrolling back, and if we miss your question or if we start <laughs> going through and you're like, hey, you didn't get to my, please feel free to put it back in. Um, the first question that I saw that came in from Matt was what time of year is typically best for applying to a summer internship at Qualcomm? Uh, so I can take that one. So our internship applications typically open end of August or September. Um, so as you're looking towards next summer's internship programs, um, please do apply as early as possible. Um, I will say this year um, we did get a later start, but typically we start to review right away. So once we post those applications, um, please do start to apply and those are posted on our career site. Um, the next one, Matt, that I, or I'm sorry, Zach, that I think that you could answer, and that one came in from Annabelle, was uh, do yes. these programs and offerings apply to community college students? Yes, very good question. So these programs are open to all students, um, regardless, community college through PhD, everything in, in, in between. And if you are also a, a, a recent graduate, feel free to sign up as well. So, and we don't exactly define what that means, but in the last, let's say three to five years, if you're on this call, it means you're involved in the IEEE HKN community, and we'd be more than happy to have you take those programs. So please feel free to sign up. And then also pass to your friends for sure. Yeah, we, lo we love passing it along to the friends. <laughs> Yes. And then I also see from Sylvie, in what ways would you say Qualcomm Academy complements what students learn in the classroom? Ooh, very, very good question. So that will, of course, depend on what you're learning in the classroom. But essentially, our programs, especially the 5G university program, covers a lot or it, it talks a lot about use cases in 5G. So really, regardless of what you're studying, you can take what you learn and based or in our courses and apply it to really whatever you're doing in either the academic or professional setting. We talk about 5G use cases in a variety of different industries, transportation, technology, uh, healthcare, education, and so on. So I think it's a, it's a pretty good program to say, hey, like I now have a very good understanding of what 5G is, how it can be applied, and then I can take that and apply it to really whatever I'm doing. Any other any, questions? Yeah. yeah. 
And while we're waiting, Zach, I did want to piggyback off of, so I know a couple of slides ago, as you were kind of walking through the, the offerings, this, y'all, for those of you kind of like going through your job search or thinking about it, what a wonderful way to honestly put into practice what I mentioned about number one, like honing in on your skill set, but tailoring that job, you know, as of course, as, as you all know, you're applying and you're like, oh, is this getting seen? To be able to kind of bold and make yourself stand out by becoming certified and having taken courses in these, especially if you're applying for something that you have certifications in from that company, that's such an incredible way to make your resume stand out. So if that's something that you're leaning towards, highly encourage you to explore it. Um, because really, again, it's it's going to help you stand out and just become a much stronger um, engineer. Definitely, definitely. I see another question, Cody. I think that'll be best for you from... Uh, yes, let's yeah. see. From you, is there any intern position open for ASIC design for upcoming? So f for, if this is for, if it is for 2025, which is written, there, there likely will be. So every summer we absolutely hire um, a lot of hardware engineers um, internships. And a lot of those teams will span ASIC, ASIC design, um, digital design verification, things like that for if, if for any reason, I'm not saying you that it was, but if you were referring to this coming summer, I know those positions have been filled at this time. Um, but please do check back in August and September when we repost for next summer. And we absolutely do hire those. And for anyone wondering at the full-time level as well, that's a huge part of what we do. And we absolutely are always looking for great talent in those areas. Awesome. I see another question, how we connect NB-IoT devices. Um, that wouldn't be, I wouldn't know that, Cody. I wouldn't any? either. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. um, Abhishek, feel, feel, feel free to email me and uh, with a little more detail on what you're talking about there. And, and I can, I can try to help you. Awesome. Any other questions? I think we hit everything um, in here. I'm looking at the chat. Um, I just want to reiterate, uh, if you're if you're a student leader, please reach out to me. Um, either send me, either come visit my booth. We have an interested in bringing Academy to campus, and you can click I'm interested. That'll give me your email as well. Um, or shoot me a private message over this platform with your name, school, and email, and I'm happy to reach out in the next couple of weeks. And I'd love to get all this training to your to your to your campuses. And uh, and yeah, I think that's all I have. Uh, Cody, anything else? No, that's it. Yeah, it was wonderful being able to chat with y'all. I think it's always an incredible opportunity to kind of meet what we know to be the future leaders and hopefully future leaders at Qualcomm. So thank you all so much uh, for having us. Oh, it looks like we did get one more question. Um, oh, yes, we have one more. Amy. What soft skills do you look for? That's actually a great question. So it's easy to focus on the, the technical skills, but for soft skills, I would say that there's two. Number one is, is a willingness to learn. And it sounds like it'd be hard to gauge, but it's actually a little easier to gauge in interviews than you would think. So when you're in your interviews, just make sure that you're bringing, number one, your full self. But if you do get feedback from the engineer, or maybe you do get the answer wrong and they try and guide you and like say, hey, you might want to approach it this way next time, make sure that you're taking that, you're gracious, you're grateful for the feedback and that you're eager to understand like, oh, okay, so if I were to do that, would I do this, this, and this versus like, no, I didn't get that wrong or, you know, versus getting defensive. So it really goes back to that willingness to learn, you know, wanting to wanting to understand. And then I think that the second part is just communication skills. So again, thinking out loud, being able to kind of speak through what you're looking for and talking to, um, those are truly the the two that we that we really look for across no matter what type of role that you're looking for. And then it looks like Sylvie, awesome. from a recruiter's perspective, do you have specific advice for people looking to make a career transition from one focus area to a different one? That's a great question. And actually, I have seen that quite a bit. Um, so the first one is if you're still in school and if it makes sense um, to pivot your major at that time, of course, that would be the first one. So let's just say you're in sophomore year, you were originally tending, you know, intending to maybe get a degree in computer science because you wanted to be a software engineer, but maybe through IEEE or through any type of other awareness or engagement opportunity that you had, you kind of had this 
aha moment where you're like, actually, you know, I, I want to be an ASIC engineer. And so if you do have that, um, number one, of course, if there's opportunities for you to either pivot your program or degree focus, and it makes sense, then that would be the first one. If you're looking to change that focus and you're already in it. So let's just say you're like, I'm in senior year. There's really no going back at this point. The first thing you could do, of course, is explore certification programs, things like the Academy and Zach's team offers is how do you beef up your resume with th with those skill sets without actually having the degree focus area? Because although the degree is the easiest way, I you know, quote unquote, easiest way to put on your resume, like, hey, I'm qualified. There's actually a lot more that you can do with that. Um, another one is to get involved with projects that you can do, whether that's on campus, if you've already graduated, then maybe you could seek out opportunities to kind of help with those things. Um, but then the other part, of course, is like once you're in a company, oftentimes there's ways in which that you can take certifications and um, enhance your skill sets in the company that they will either fund or that's offered through their continued learning. So if you are at a company once you've graduated and you're like, well, can't change my major, I'm already in a company full time, what you could do is start to meet with people from those teams. Hey, what are those skill sets that you're looking for? Do you allow like stretch assignments? You know, can I work with your team part time to start to learn this? Getting a mentor in those areas. And then as you start to build up those opportunities that you've taken while they seem little at the time, I think that's a great way for you to create then what would make you eligible for that role. Zach, anything on that that you would add? Awesome. Yeah, I think, um, no, I think that's good. And actually, I can tell you, I have experience transferring from one role to an entirely new role. Um, and this is not in the engineering space. But I guess one thing I found very helpful was was completely redesigning my my resume to actually fit that specific role. Um, I had a job title in my old role that would make absolutely no sense, for example, in in the new area that, that that I worked in. So I changed on my resume the name of that job title to actually fit what I what I actually did um, at, in in the way that the new employer would would actually see it. Um, so I don't know if that's something that you've seen, Cody, but uh, I've found that to work for me quite well because um, I was able to then better explain to the recruiters what exactly I did in my last position. That's a great, yeah, great insight. Let's see, is there a possibility of informational interviews? Yeah, absolutely. So I know on my profile, I have my um, my profile linked. So if you would like to reach out to, I, I'll put it out there for myself. Like if you would, please shoot me a message on LinkedIn. I know, especially on the recruiting side, we do get a ton of messages on LinkedIn. So if you could put add a note that you were part of uh, this conference, that way I know I can prioritize it. But absolutely, feel free to send me a message and I'm happy to connect with you and, and chat through um, through an informational interview. Awesome. Awesome. Well, all right, guys. I think uh, I think if there are no more questions, um, we will say thank you very much. This was really awesome. I love I love how uh, I know Amy told us that everyone on here is very chatty, and you are, and I love that. Everyone's participating, so thank you, and thank you, Cody, and thank you, IEEE and HKN. This is this is really great, guys. Thank you, everyone. Mm -hmm.